Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we read Parasha Kitsetse and this, par this Parasha is read always uh, in the month of Elul, right before the high holidays. Uh, and the, the meaning of the Parasha, the name, what it uh, means, Kitsetse, is that when you go out to war against your enemies, this is what the, the, the practical meaning of it, it is. And it's talking about the different wars that the Jewish people had to wage against their enemies. Nevertheless, it's also a spiritual war that is going inside of each and every one of us. So Elul is a month of divine compassion. It's a month in which the king is in the field, the Hashem is very accessible and Hashem is very compassionate. It's a month in which we listen to the shofar every day, uh, the blast of the inspiring shofar that wakes us up from our slumber, from our sleep. Uh, it, it reminds us of our purpose in this world and that we have to live a life of meaning and purpose. And the mazal, the, the zodiac sign of the month of Elul, is Virgo. And it, it denotes the virgin maiden. So a maiden is a young girl, is a young girl in a primary state of goodness and purity. And her innocence remains unsullied, like a virgin. And so like infants who have never tasted sin, she represents a state of joy and peace and hope in which all gates are open to a glowing future. So imagine when a person is young, is a child, uh, it has this purity of soul, it's, a, it's always in wonder, it's always waiting to see what tomorrow gonna bring him. Uh, Rabbi uh, Plinsky, he says that uh, children, for them to go to sleep is very hard at night because they're always in a sense of what's next, what's next, what's next. They don't want to miss out on anything. Um, us, uh, adults, we want to go to sleep because we're so tired. We're, we're done with the day. We just want to close our eyes and shut off. But a child is never, never, the day is not enough. He wants more. So this is the, um, what it's telling us here that this young maiden is this child, this, this child that represents this purity that it's always hopeful for the future. So the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement, who was actually born on the 18th of Elul, thought that we should achieve our return to God through an inner sense of profound joy. So in the month of Elul, we read this Torah portion of this, of this, um, of this book of, uh, of, uh, of the Barim, which says, Kitsetse, when you go out to war, and it's talking about in the in the parasha actual wars but in reality every day that we wake up we're confronted with a new war and an internal war and it contains the greatest con concentration of this word maiden it's 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 uh, repeated a, a, a few times in the torah portion and it appears with reference to the liberous accusations of a man against his bride, claiming that she was not a virgin when he married her. So there's a pasuk in this, in this Torah portion of a man that marries a girl and he comes back to the parents' home to return the girl because he says that she's not a virgin. And he brings out this li libelous claim against the maiden of Israel. And if it's not true, he is punished severely for this. So in practice, the sages rarely implement the law, like it's not something that is uh, uh, common. And today, we don't even look at that. It's, it's not part of, of, of today's uh, uh, reality. So nonetheless, every mitzvah in the Torah has eternal significance. If we're learning this this, uh, this week, it's because it still applies to us in a different way, in a more spiritual way. So. It says the phrase maiden of Israel appears four more times in the, in the book of the prophets and each time it refers to the entire Jewish people. And one example is in the verse of consolation from, from Jeremiah. In his prophecy he says, I will yet build you and you will be built maiden of Israel. And, the, and we are all the maiden of Israel. Um, Rabbi Itzhak Ginsberg is teaching us here 
that the that the the, the libel against this uh, maiden of Israel is not only applicable to the maiden of Israel; it's applicable to all of us. Uh, when when a Jew falls, we all fall. It 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 affects the whole system because the Jewish people are one body. And so, for example, if the head hurts, everything in the body is not okay. So right now, you see that Jewish people uh, are hurting a lot. We're going through a very hard time. We're actually going through a real physical war in which we are fighting for our survival, our existence. It's a, it's a war that the purpose of the war is to, is to finish the Jewish people, take us out of the, of the reality of the world. And so every person that is hurting for this war, it can be a, a soldier in the war, it can be a mother that lost a child, it can be a regular person in the street that is walking down the street, it affects all of us. So he continues saying at his origin or our soul is pure. And this is very important to understand. And uh, it says that it descends into the mundane world. It becomes tainted by our sins and our innocence corrodes in the race of life. So when a baby is born, when a baby comes to the world, it's a pure neshama. The, the, the baby has not sinned. It's a pure, holy neshama. It comes clean, 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 clean of, of, of sins. It has not one sin. <clears throat> and, uh, and life brings different challenges to this life. And uh, while he starts growing up, he starts uh, fa having failings. He starts doing things that he's not supposed to do. And then... Um, his purity starts to recede from the foreground and the initial virgin state of the soul appears to be defiled. So it seems like at my age, obviously, I'm not like a newborn. I have lived, I have done things, I have eaten things I shouldn't have eaten, I have said things I shouldn't have said, I have done things that I sh shouldn't have done. And so my, my, my persona as it is today is not in the same state as a newborn or a one-year-old child or a two-year-old child that is devoid of sin. So the collective has also fallen from its prime state from the peak of Mount Sinai, which is when we received the Torah, Mount Sinai, we were all like angels. Everybody was like one heart beating together. We were sinless, we were like newborns. And then it comes, uh, they come to, to, to um, to sin with a golden calf and from there on the downfall comes and then we do teshuvah and we go up again and then we fail again and then we fall again and then we do teshuvah again and then again we make everything well. So we see here that the collective has also fallen from its prime state from the peak of Mount Sinai from the shining era of King Solomon and the temple and we have descended into a very dark exile. So for the last 2,500 years, the Jewish people are steeped in, in darkness. We are in the dungeons. Uh, and, 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 uh, and what then remains of our long lost innocence? What happened to our innocence? So he continues saying, Rabbi Ginsberg, that trauma, the trauma of the temple's destruction, and this word trauma is a very, a famous word nowadays, trauma, trauma, everything is trauma. But it is true, we still are paying for this trauma. We still have collective trauma. And, um, and, and, it, it, and, and the feeling remains that things can never be the same. Uh, look, last year at this time, we, we would have never imagined what we have had to go through the last uh, 10 months, 11 months. Uh, it's been horrific. Uh, and every day we see the news and we're, it, it, it's, it's heavy on the soul. It's very hard to cope with this, uh, with, this, with this reality in which we are steeped into. But what we have to understand is that yes, although it looks very dark, and one might think, okay, this is never gonna end and this is never gonna be okay. That, that's when we have to come and understand, no, that's not the approach. That's not the right way to look at things because 
although we can be living through very difficult times, there's a point, there's a place in which our soul is, is as, the, the, as a newborn. Our soul is not tainted. There's a level of the soul that is still pristine. Um, there's uh, actually five levels of the soul. You have uh, the nefesh, the ruach, the neshama, the haya, and the yehida. You have the nefesh is like the instinctive uh, part of the level of the soul. You have the, in the emotional level of the soul, which is ruach. You have the one that's called neshama, it's the intellectual level of the soul. You have haya, which is transcendental level of the soul, it's outside of the body. And then that haya connects to the yehida, which is a level of the soul that is up there with God. Uh, it never comes down, it's never sullied, let's say it. And that level of the soul is always perfect. And so, because we have that that level within us, not within us, it's actually outside of us, but it is connected to us, we always have the ability to come back and to, and to believe that there's, there's a rainbow at the other side of the story, that not everything is gonna be dark for us forever. So in Elul, as long as, and, and difficult, the, the year comes to end, because it's been a very hard year, this sense of descent becomes more pronounced. So now, right now, our, our hearts are heavy. What can I say? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna paint the picture in colorful, rosy uh, colors. It, our hearts are heavy. It's sad. It's sad. We're going through very hard times. It's not easy to cope with the reality of, of Israel right now and the Jewish people. It's not easy. But on a personal level and the national scales, we feel depleted and out of hope. How can we rehabilitate ourselves to retrieve our virgin state of joy when we are no longer pure? So this is, uh, this is what Rabbi Ginsberg is gonna, is gonna tell us right now, uh, which is, is fascinating. And he says that in Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av, which is last, was last month, which was the day in which we were mourning for the destruction of our two temples and many calamities that happened to the Jewish people, we were at the lowest point of the year. That's the lowest point of the year. It's a time of a lot of sadness. We don't go to parties. We don't listen to music. We don't buy new clothes. We don't, it's very sad. And then it's, it's, it's a day of national mourning. And then, Six days later, we're celebrating. It's one of the happiest days of the year where we go into to Be'ab, which is the, the, one of the most joyful days of the year. And the Mishnah describes how on that day, maidens would dance in the vineyards. So it, it is a day in which the, world, the girls would come out and they would all come dressed in white, like, to, like the virgin state, the pure state, and the boys would come out and look at these girls and then they would choose their wives and it was a day of, of love. It, it, it's actually the Valentine's Day of the Jewish uh, calendar. So we see that this uh, 15th of Av, Tubeab is the initial step of a return to a pure, youthful state of joy. And in Elul, which is where we're right now, this month of Elul, which is a mo month before the high holidays, eh, which follows the month of Av, and, and later on it connects to the month of Tishrei, we begin the process of rectification and repentance. So Virgo, which is the Masal of the month of Elul, symbolizes the maiden of Israel and she represents the point of innate untouched purity that can never be defiled and every Jewish soul no matter how low it may, it may have fallen retains a connection with this pure untainted starting point so in uh, on Yom Kippur uh, when we are at the end of the services of Yom Kippur when we enter the moment that it's called Neila this is the point in which we have access to that, uh, that, 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 that virgin state, let's say, 
of purity of our soul. Uh, each um, uh, Amida, each uh, Shemone Ezra of, 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 of the day of Yom Kippur, beginning with the Amida that we start uh, in Arvit and the, the day before, the night before, each Amida connects to one of these levels of the soul. So one connects to the, to the, to the Nefesh, which is the instinctive, the, the Shaharit prayer con connects to the level of the emotions, the Musaf uh, connects to the level of the intellect. Then you have uh, Minha, which connects to the level of transcend transcendence. And then you have Neila, which will take you to your Yehida, which is that point that is uh, of your soul that is uh, never uh, uh, sullied. So in a lul, the clouds that conceal this distant origin disperse and it returns to our field of vision. What happens right now is that we, we start connecting to this point because we know we have it. So the source of our souls is of true self and we, when we contemplate it, we realize that all the sins we have committed throughout the year do, do not really uh, reflect our identity. So you are not what you do. You are not what you do in your life. You are not, like people can behave in a bad way. You can say that person behaved horribly. That person uh, didn't behave in a correct way. But the inner essence of a person, and this is Jewish philosophy, is that the inner essence of every person in this world is good. It's good because it's a creation of Hashem. It cannot be bad. And every person comes to this world to, to do something good. What happens is that once we're in the world, then the world entices us and takes us in different directions. But we all have the ability to be good. So as the verse in the book of Amos, the prophet Amos begins, she has fallen, she will not arise, the maiden of Israel. The sages interpret this by reading, she has fallen and will not fall again. Arise, the maiden of Israel. And this refers to the innermost point of the soul that remains untainted by sin. And the potential to elevate it from the fallen state is never lost. And then in the Zohar, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the master of, of the inner dimension of the Torah, of the, of the mystical uh, part of the Torah, he doesn't like this interpretation. He reads the verse literally. Once the maiden of Israel has fallen, she will not be able to lift herself again. And what he means here is that, that we cannot do it by ourselves. It's, we can do it by ourselves. We cannot lift ourselves by ourselves. It, we need Hashem. We need God to help us rectify ourselves. If, if we don't have Hashem in the picture, you can never rectify whatever you did wrong. You have to have Hashem. And God himself reinstates the purity of the Jewish people by forgiving all their sins. So in the Hayenu, in the introduction of the, of the parasha, it says something very beautiful. It says that the Sohar points out that the Hebrew word for bread, lechem, is derived from the same root that denotes war. And this symbolizes the concept of the continuous struggle between the base and sublime natures of man. Whether he eats his bread as a gluten in the manner of, of, in which an animal eats his food, or does, he do a, does the person does it in a higher level in which he eats according to Allah, he sits down, he washes for bread, he does the proper blessing, he, eats, uh, he cuts the little pieces, he puts it in his mouth, he does it in a way in which his intention of eating this bread is to nourish his body, to be able to fulfill the will of the Creator. And in this way, the, the person is this war that he's, the bread is either a war or it's, or it's a bread. Either one. So one source of inspiration to help a person succeed in overcoming these challenges is to reflect upon the source of his soul. And our sages thought that the Jewish souls actually preceded the rest of creation. And we were even consulted by God when the decision was being made whether or not to create the world. And the souls gave their full consent. So we're in this world because we asked for it. 
you're here living the reality you're living you're going through whatever you have to go through you asked for it it's not it's like how can god do this to me you asked for it this is part of your of your um elevation of your of your soul in this world and thus from the elevated vantage point of the soul in its primary source every aspect of this world was seen as a condu conducive to serving god for otherwise the soul would not have consented to its creation so the whole purpose of us being down in this world is to serve hashem it's to to serve god Today, my husband was uh, summoned into jury duty. So he went to pay his service to the, this wonderful country that has uh, taken us. And um, actually he was uh, interviewed and uh, the, the, the person that is interviewing him, the, the, I think it's a lawyer or a judge, I don't know who was interviewing him. They asked him questions to see where like, that they're not that they don't take sides when they're gonna be juries and he asked him like for example if your wife goes to las vegas alone how would you feel about it would you would you trust her and he looks at him and says what well, you're asking the wrong person i'm a rabbi i'm a rabbi my wife doesn't go alone to las vegas this is not part of our reality. We don't live like this. This is, this, it's not even a, 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 something that we worry about. This is not part of our, of our mindset. Why? Because a Jew lives holy. We live godly. A, a woman doesn't go to Las Vegas alone to have fun, a, a, a married woman. This is not what we do. So this is what he's saying here is that at that moment the soul's appreciation how things that we perceive now as negative influence or are or an enemy because they attempt to deter us from observing god's will and in truth an aid to divine service for they enable us to serve god out of our own free choice rather than a mere robbers. therefore even the creation of our enemies had the soul's full consent so even if they're singing in the streets from the river to the sea whatever 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 this it, we consented to this we signed an agreement before coming to this world we said okay we we go with this why because this is the opportunity that we have to shine this is the opportunity that a jew comes to this world to make this world godly so the the idea of the soul getting dirty in the world because we end up doing things we shouldn't be doing in reality that's not what should be a, ma making us low this is not what should be our concerns like people get very depressed because i'm such a bad person i'm not acting in the right way i don't know why i do this this is what the torah is telling us no don't go there yeah you messed up yes you messed up but you know what you can always correct you can always correct because you have a godly spark because you have purity within you look for the purity and once you look for the purity and you want to be a righteous person because this is your choice Hashem will come and open the doors for you and he will do everything so you can be righteous again he will clean you up and so your problem is not dwelling on, on, on my boo-boos. Yes, you did them. Yes, go clean yourself, ask forgiveness, eh, do whatever you need to do to make things better. But at the end of the day, eh, you just have to turn away from evil and do good and tell Hashem, I'm here, I'm here, hold my hand, please help me go back to that, that, that spark that part of me that is like a maiden that is the maiden of israel it's this pure pure soul so i leave you here i wish you a blessed week and remember live a little higher thank you